Hey everyone, my name is Nishant. Today I want to speak to you about how we are leveraging Microsoft Flow to connect to a SharePoint list with Microsoft Teams for quick collaboration. This is just a particular ad hoc solution I put together for my team. We were managing a SharePoint list and had a need to communicate items broadly and collaborate deeply on each item. The purpose of this video is just to highlight a simple solution on how we leverage the incoming webbook connector and rich cards of Microsoft Teams to keep the conversational workflow mainly in Teams for consumers and decision makers of this content. I will not be discussing all the features of Microsoft Flow or SharePoint. We will just be skimming the surface to demonstrate how we can simply tie these products together. This isn't the only way to accomplish this particular task, but it has been proven to be quick and robust. The first thing we'll need to do is identify the team and channel we want to post these messages to. I've chosen the content production team and the FAQ channel for this demo. On this channel, we want to set up an incoming webbook connector, so we expand the channel menu and select connectors. The list of connectors available within our team show up in the menu. There are ways to search and filter this list, but lucky for us, incoming webbook connector is one of the top suggested items. We'll need to click on the add button to add this connector to our team. As you can see here, this is the first time I'm adding this connector to this team. So I'm prompted with the product details, which outline common items like publisher, product name, requested permissions, and links to the terms and conditions. I only need to accept this once per team. Since I do accept, I'll go ahead and click add. Now the page to set up the connector for our particular channel and use case. You can set up multiple instances of this particular connector. Since I know this connector will be attached to my SharePoint FAQ list, I've named it FAQ list. I'll leave the default image, but you can change it if you'd like. You can simply scroll down and click done when you made the modifications you need to. It's important you copy this URL and keep it aside. We'll need it later as it's the endpoint we'll be posting to. Now you can see that you have this connector configured to your channel. Now that we've configured the connector, we should do a quick test to see if the pipe is working. On the screen, I'm showing the message card playground. It's a great resource to get some sample templates and see what's possible. I've taken this particular sample to model my own rich card against. I have a link to this webpage on the resources slide you'll see later. I'm going to leverage Fiddler to issue a post request of the JSON that was copied from the message playground. This will post to the incoming webbook connector. As you can see, we need to do an HTTP post to the URL we copied earlier from the connector. I'll modify the payload a little to change the title to test from Fiddler. When this is set up, click execute. Now you can see that the message was successfully posted from Fiddler. It went to an endpoint and resulted in a status code of 200 OK. You'll know the post was successfully made to the connector because the body of the response is 1. We will now come back to our channel to ensure we didn't post this message randomly somewhere else. It did in fact land on our channel. Here you can see that since I leveraged the sample card exactly, all the details are the same as shown in the message card playground sample. And the title in our card shows the test from Fiddler text. If you look at the top of the card, we can see the title we set earlier when configuring the connector to be FAQ list. There are lots of things that can be accomplished through rich cards. I'd highly recommend looking through the samples and the documentation to find items that will help you with your particular solution. On this page, I have an empty sample SharePoint list. I've kept this list very simple. To create a new flow, click on the flow dropdown and create a flow. On the right side, you'll see some quick templates pop up. The one we want isn't here, so let's go find some more templates. At the time of creating this video, our particular path isn't a template. So let's create one from a blank template. We will need to add a trigger. For us, it will come from SharePoint. Let's select the highlighted trigger when an item is created. This will kick off a flow whenever a new item is added to our FAQ list. Because this is the first time we're adding this trigger, we will need to connect SharePoint to flow with our personal credentials. On this screen, you can see that SSO is handling this for me. Once this connection has been added, we can move on to configuring our trigger. If this screen doesn't populate all the SharePoint sites that are connected to your account, you can simply copy paste your site for enter custom value. When I add my SharePoint site, the list that I have on the site will pop up. Here I'll select the FAQ list. We've now configured our trigger. We want to add a new step next. When configuring the next step, you can add a condition or action. You can set up conditions to fork on item fields from the SharePoint list. This will be helpful to reduce noise or only call out specific types of additions. To keep this simple and short, we will just add an action. On my screen, you can see that HTTP is already a suggested connection. If it doesn't appear to be so on yours, you can simply search for it. 
As mentioned in the intro, we're just doing a simple HTTP post to our webhook connector. So we can select the first option here, HTTP-HTTP. Now it's time to configure our HTTP post connection. We want to set the method as post. The URL will be the webhook URL I had you copy earlier from the connector configuration screen. The sample we are using is a rich card adjacent format. So I just add this content type header. I don't think the header is necessary, but as good practice, I always add the content type to all my HTTP payloads. Now for the body, I start by simply pasting the message card playground sample. I removed a lot of the fields and rooted it to what is relevant to me. I've updated fields such as title and changed the facts to directly represent what fields are available in my SharePoint list. Now I will update fields within my sample post body with dynamic properties on my SharePoint list. You can get profile data from the person who has made the action, in this case created the item such as display picture. Now you can see that in the body, the modified by picture is inserted as a value for activity image. In the interest of time, I've updated the other values with metadata and column data from the SharePoint list. One item I do want to call out is the link to item value that is associated as a target for the view in SharePoint button. This is if anyone wants to come back to the SharePoint list, it's an easy button link to bring them back directly to the item. Once this is done, you can click done or update flow depending on if you've already saved during this process. We have come here to the flow summary. You can see it has an empty run history. Now let's test our flow end to end. We want to add a new item to our FAQ SharePoint list. We'll fill in these values with just some sample data and click save. The item has now been added to my SharePoint list, as you can see displayed on the screen. When we come to check up on our flow, we see a single run. This was triggered from our recent addition. In this instance, it just happened 20 seconds ago and it shows that it has taken one second to run. When we go to check our FAQ channel on Microsoft Teams, we see that there is a new rich card post from the incoming webhook connector. When we go to check on our FAQ channel on Microsoft Teams, we can see that there is a new rich card post from an incoming webhook connector. We see that I created this particular item. You can see my test email address, title, and answer for the FAQ item above the fold. Clicking on see more will show the remaining fields we posted to this rich card. You can see now that there is a disclaimer that this was created by an automated flow. Although our disclaimer does say do not reply, which I should have probably edited from the sample, I will at mention any content owner, publisher, or stakeholder in a response to this card to draw their attention to it. This will allow them to review the item without having to leave the channel. And if they wanted to edit the item, they can simply click the button of view in SharePoint to go back to the item in the SharePoint list. As I own this flow, I know that this channel really only gets used to discuss these FAQ items. So I'll follow this channel. My team knows I follow this channel, so they don't need to create an item and at message me. I'll just get notified for all the items that get posted here. So we've added a flow, but like with all good HTTP systems, we do need to add a step to ensure that the message gets delivered successfully every time. So let's edit this flow. Under the new step, let's click on the more and select add a do until. We'll want to monitor the response of our HTTP post. If you remember earlier, I stated that when the message gets successfully posted to a connector, the body will have a value of 1. We also want to change the default limits of this do-until loop. The timeout value for this do-until follows the ISO 8601 standard, for those who are interested. Basically, the default value states that for the timeout period of 1 hour, this do-until will occur 60 times. This will divide the duration by the total occurrences to arrive at once per minute. I want my particular flow to retry over a period of four weeks at once per hour. So if you take four weeks, multiply by seven days by 24 hours, you'll arrive at 672. So hopefully if there is some sort of outage, it doesn't last beyond four weeks. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. I've added links here for the MSDN article on rich cards, links to the message card playground and Fiddler for those who are interested. Thanks for joining us for this tech tip about Microsoft Teams. Join the conversation on our community forum at aka.ms Teams Tech Community. We read our user voice forum daily, so make sure your voice is heard and you're voting for your favorite feature requests. If part of your job is to drive adoption of any Office 365 product, the Driving Adoption Forum is for you. To learn more about the implementation of Teams, use our practical guidance at successwithteams.com or get assistance from our fast track teams.